Welcome to Talk Soup. I'm Dr. Andrea Kane, Superintendent for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, and I thank you for being with us today. Talk Soup is a show that will inform and give you information about what's happening in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We have 14 schools and one alternative school, and we are very, very proud of the work that goes on in each and every one of them. We're also proud of the partnerships and the community activity that we have. So much support in the community that we decided to have a show to bring them to you so that you can watch them from the comfort of your home. So today I have with me two of our supervisors from the Office of Curriculum and Instruction. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Adam Tolley and Mr. Michael Page. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank you for having us. Mr. Tolley, please talk to us about what your responsibilities are in the Office of Curriculum and Instruction. And I know that you are a supervisor. You'll talk to us about what you supervise and some sure. of the great things that are going on in your area. Sure, sure. So uh, this is my first year with Queen Anne County Public Schools. Um, and I am in charge of the Career and Technology Education uh, Department, which is better referred to as CTE, and also the Social Studies Department. And uh, within you know both of those departments are kind of uh, two very different two very different realms. Um, so it's it's kind of uh, uniquely challenging when when dealing with that. But um, uh, it's very good just to to have those two different perspectives. And the Career Technology Education part deals with um, areas where students are able to um, learn a trade, for example, to learn specific um, career uh, paths and be able to pursue those paths when they graduate from school. Um, so that's uh, it's a very exciting, very exciting area. So Mr. Tolley, you joined Queen Anne's County Public Schools in August of this year. Yes. And you're doing a fabulous job, might I say, with Thank that. You. Getting out into the community yes. and getting some partnerships going Definitely. and really enhancing some of the partnerships that we already have. Definitely. So some of your work is with the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Some of your work is with Workforce Development. Some of your work is with the Chesapeake Community College. Yes. So I know that you're out there and there are lots of things that we've got planned for next yes. year, why don't you tell our viewers about some of the things that we have that will be new for our students for next year? Sure. So one of the things um, when I came on board that I wanted to do was really immerse myself into the community. And I've been able to do that through um, a partnership with the Queen Anne's County Economic Development Commission. And I attend their uh, regular monthly meetings. And that partnership has been has been wonderful. Um, just the connections that I've been able to make with, with them. Um, and, you know, their goal really is to, uh, and along with the Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce, their goal really is to bridge the gap between the business world and the education world. And um, there's so many opportunities for our students. So we have a we have a vision um, that we've we've looked at together, and it just just really simply entails getting the students um, connected with businesses. Um, getting them uh, educated and kind of immersed into what is going on. Uh, there's so many, so many businesses um, and opportunities within Queen Anne's County that, that people don't know about. So, so one of my goals is to really um, educate the students, educate the teachers as to, to what's out there. Um, and so one of the things that we have planned actually coming up on the 29th of January is a tour of businesses within Queen Anne's County. And this has been a, um, a partnership um, really with the Queen Anne's County and Chamber of Commerce uh, with Linda Friday um, and her and I have gotten together and met several times and kind of developed a plan and basically what we're going to do is have the teachers um, go out and tour three businesses on the 29th and the businesses are going to give a presentation about what they do and about how they would like to connect with the education world with with our schools with our kids what opportunities they have for the kids and and sort of what they're looking for as far as um skills with it with the students um so we are very very excited about that um 
And, that and that is so better. important because while we are a school district and we certainly advocate for our students to engage in post-secondary learning, so whether it is at a community college or Definitely. a four-year university, those things are great. But the reality is that some students do not aspire to college and that's Definitely. okay. That's okay. Yes. That is completely okay. And I'd like to, you know, say I'm certainly a proponent of that. I sure. mean, if I could get rid of some of the student loans that I have I myself agree. and that I'm paying for for my children, that'd be great. Yep. Um, so we have an opportunity for students to learn a skill. Yes. Sometimes college is associated with that Correct. as our partnership with Chesapeake Community College, yes. but sometimes it's not. Yep. And sometimes the learning is really a part of them being out in the community Definitely. and engaging in that skill on the job. Yes. So they learn on the job and that sets the community up for success Definitely. because then we are teaching, training, and employing our own, our own. Right? Exactly right right here on the Eastern Shore. Exactly so right. it is a win-win situation and just like you mentioned, fulfills a workforce demand. It does. It so does. that is just important work yes. that we really are really trying to get yes. out into the community and you're doing a great, great job Thank with you. that. Thank One you. thing that um, many people may not know about is the Fire Academy. Definitely. Definitely. So what are students doing in the Fire Academy? So in, in Queen Anne's County, we have um, what's called the Upper Shore Regional Training Center and it's part of the Maryland uh, Fire Rescue Institute, MIFRI uh, for short. And this is um, a training facility that offers state certification, state training to firefighters from, from the Upper Shore region. There's also one on the Lower Shore um, region in Princess Anne. So this one serves, serves our area and our students have the ability to take a course there called Firefighter One EMR. And this is a one year course that the students take. And when they come out, they have um, several state certifications that, that they are able to use and to go into, they can go into the, the fire and EMS field. They can go into emergency uh, field. I mean, there's so many opportunities that they have and it's a one year program. Um, the, the beauty of this program is that it doesn't cost the county anything. Um, it's paid for all by the state of Maryland through the, through the University of Maryland. Um, and it's just a great opportunity. So, so those students go in and learn several skills. Um, again, they have they get a firefighter one certification, and emergency medical responder certification, hazardous materials certification. So, um, and it, and again, it's just a one year program. And they go in and and everything is provided to them. Like I said, state pays for everything, um, and it's just a wonderful opportunity. So we have students at that facility from Queen Anne, from Talbot County, Caroline County. Um, that participate in this program. It's just a just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. That is, that is, is a great opportunity. Yes. Work-based learning at its yeah, best. At its best, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing with Thank us. You. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you a little bit later okay. about some, some fun things. All right. So that I'll our be. community can get to know you a little bit yeah, better. I'll be ready. Great. And so also we have Mr. Michael Page, who is supervisor also in the Office of Curriculum and Instruction. And Mr. Page, what do you supervise? Currently, I supervise uh, science and PE and health. Mm -hmm. And so what exciting things are happening in the area of science, or you also handle environmental literacy, That's supervise great. that. So what's exciting in environmental literacy and science? So um, uh, currently, it's actually been occurring several years from now. This is our fifth year to partnership with um, several of our uh, higher education um, and uh, several of our uh, nonprofits and uh, organizations around around the county. Uh, one that I want to highlight is with Washington College with Dr. Um, Doug Levin and uh, Ms. Jemima Clark is uh, our Rivers to the Bay program. We've had uh, a partnership with Washington College and our neighbors to the north, Kent County, and we apply for a grant and uh, we've had over a hundred educators go through uh, this professional development which then in turn um, uh, is uh, then brought into our schools as instructional tools um, for real life science that the students can, and the, and the program is called uh, Rivers to the Bay. Um, and within the Rivers to the Bay, uh, there's several modules that we've created. And uh, one uh, example of those modules is students build an actual buoy that collects data within uh, a waterway or a water system. And so the students can actually build that buoy, calculate the information uh, and see what types of things like turbidity, uh, acidity, uh, those are some of the things that the students have been able to monitor. And actually we also link with NOAA 
um, the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, they have a program that has large buoys in the bay, mm -hmm. so it's a real life connection to, to the uh, waterways that surround us. Another one that I'd like to highlight too is an engineering type um, uh, uh, experience for our students where they actually build an underwater aquabot. Um, so they, they, from the ground, uh, they build the entire aquabot, learn to manipulate it, learn about buoyancy, how to look at underground wreckage or whether it might be the wow. dredging that occurs in the, in the uh, bay or whatever it may be, looking at uh, oyster restoration. Um, those students can actually build them and they can actually s watch their uh, aquabot go through the, uh, the pools at Washington College. It's really amazing. And we can bring that, we actually bring those modules to the, to the classrooms or we bring the students to, uh, to the, for this case that would be a pool um, so that they can work with that. It's been an outstanding, uh, like I said, we're, we're, um, we're in the process of, uh, we're gonna be in the process of recruiting more teachers um, but it's, it's been an outstanding, outstanding program for our, for our children and our staff. Absolutely. So, and I don't need to say the importance of our students having that experience working in our waterways. And both of those um, opportunities really help us to understand the health of our waters, right? Absolutely. In, in the Bay. And which impacts our economy in this community. So Absolutely. all of those things are so very, very Real important. Life real life connections, hands-on activities that the students can dive into. And it, it, it really builds a connection to them. And what grade levels are students involved in this? That's, that's uh, it mainly in the, in the beginning stages, it was secondary, but now we're starting to work our ways uh, down into the uh, elementary. And that has come uh, really through another grant and another partnership with Environmental Concerns, uh, Atkins Arboretum, and um, the uh, Sultana, and one more, the Chesapeake Bay uh, Educational Center, so uh, CBEC. And what we've done is we've created a environmental literacy uh, matrix that expands from K to 12, mm -hmm. and each one of those partners have kind of taken hold of a grade level to uh, build students' environmental literacy and provide hands-on experiences, whether it's in the schools, in our schoolyards, or it's bringing the students to those actual um, uh, facilities for them to learn hands-on. Um, and uh, one of the partnerships with Environmental Concern that we've been able to do is each one of our, uh, each one of our elementary schools we've been able to build an actual either rain garden, pollinator garden, some type of uh, way for the students. If we can't get them out to a facility, we can, we can do the experiments and we can do the um, investigations right there on site. So that's, that's been in development this past year and it's been absolutely great partnerships with all around. That's so important for our students from the youngest ages to understand how to become good stewards of our environment. Absolutely. Uh, we've got to be here a long time, we hope, and so we need to be able to take care of that and teach our children how to do that. So I'm gonna switch gears on you just a little bit because everybody, as you know, talks about STEM. And STEM is so important to our, not only our environment here, Queen Anne's County, but across the globe and having STEM experiences and learning about science, technology, engineering, and math prepares our students for whatever future we may have ahead. Absolutely. So what would be your vision for our students' engagement in STEM programs or STEM activities as we move forward? So my real vision in terms of STEM uh, and what I would like to see a graduating student have in their toolbox is solving real life problems. Mm -hmm. So throughout our lives, whether it's a, a car that has died and the, we gotta change out the battery, or whether it's uh, preparing our students to inhabit a, a another planet, mm -hmm. right? There's always going to be problems that our society is going to have to face, and that's what I want my students to walk out with. I want them to walk out with the tools and instructions to, to, to solve our world's problems. And really, that's, that's what it's all about. We're gonna use science, we're gonna use technology, we're gonna use engineering, and we're gonna use mathematics. We're all gonna, we're all of those things together. Um, and social studies. And social studies. And social studies, Definitely. Definitely. that's right. <laughs> Gotta give them a call. Definitely. <laughs> so, we're gonna use all those things um, to, uh, to solve the problems. And that's really what I'm looking for. And um, we've, we've been working really hard to uh, base our curriculum on putting problems in front of those students and not 
uh, limiting them to a single solution. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to see is we want to see students utilizing several different solutions to call solve one problem. And if we can do that, um, I think that, that we, we've done our job as a, as a school system. Um, so. I agree. I agree. Teach your children how to think, how to think Absolutely. critically, how to solve problems. That's so right. whatever the situation might be that they face, they can think through it and they can create answers to solutions. So, or to problems. So, thank you. Thank you both. Definitely. It was a pleasure Very having good. you both here. Very good. So, at this point, I'm going to engage you in a little fun <laughs> hot seat All right. questions. Let's get ready. And it really just helps the community to get to know you a little bit better and just has a little bit of fun to it. So, I'm going to give you each about 30 seconds and I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And all I want you to do is just give me the first response that comes to your head based on the question that I pose. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna keep time here, and we'll start with Mr. Tolly since we started with you before. All give right. Mr. Page some think time here. <laughs> we're ready. And so you just give me the first answer. So I'm just gonna fire them away at you, and you tell me what you think. Okay, right. Spider Man or Batman? Batman. Super sensitive taste or super sensitive hearing? Hearing. You're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be? Rainbow. <laughs> I love it. If you could be any animal in the world, what would you be? I would be a bird. A bird. What was the last gift you gave someone? Uh, I gave my wife an Apple Watch for Christmas. Awesome. What's the last thing you watched on TV? The news. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Snow or rain? Snow. Earbuds or headphones? Headphones. Chap lips or dandruff? <laughs> Chap lips. <laughs> I don't have to worry about danger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Tolly. You. Thank you All very right. much. And so we're going to ask you, Mr. Page, pressure, and, and, you, and, you, and you can't you can't just recall what Mr. Tolly said. You have to give your own answers. <laughs> That's right. The family feud. Group. There you go. <laughs> Spider Man or Batman? Batman. Super sensitive taste or super sensitive hearing? Definitely hearing. You're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be? Blue. If you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you be? A bird. What was the last gift you gave someone? <sighs> what was the last gift I gave someone? Tick, tick, tick. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can say skip. You can yeah. say skip. There was, Christmas was wonderful this year. There we go. There were lots of presents. Coke or Pepsi? Definitely Coke. Snow or rain? Snow. Earphones or head, earbuds or headphones? Headphones. If you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. Pizza. Tick, tick, tick. There you go. <laughs> Ideal superpower. What, what superpower would you want? Oh, uh, man. Superpowers. Mm -hmm. uh, mind, mind reading. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Thank you very, nice. very much. Hopefully, our viewers had a chance to get to learn a little bit That's more great. about our school system programs that we're offering students for CTE, mm -hmm. for science, environmental literacy. Uh, thank you so much thank for the work that us. you do and the support that you thank give you. to our teachers thank and administrators. You. It's so important. And your engagement in the community Definitely. keeps great. all of us tied it's together, yes. as it should be. Yeah. Talk Soup, once again, is a show that will bring to you updates about the school system, what current events are going on, anything exciting and new that we'd like to share with everyone, our engagement with our partners in the community, and just all around good fun and learning our employees. So introducing our employees to the community. Thank you for joining Talk Soup. Again, I'm Dr. Andrea Kane, Superintendent for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We look forward to seeing you on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 7.30 a.m. We're a show that informs and shares updates about our school system, and we can't wait to see you again. <laughs>